Hey guys, I want to do a quick video on Halo. Uh, if you are paying attention and you've been using Halo for a while, uh, you've also most likely been stuck on the stable version. I wouldn't say stuck, but they've been on stable for quite a while. Um, I think their last stable version was 105, maybe. Uh, they've just released 111 to stable. And if you can see the screen, um, you're going to see how many features they've released from in just 111. Uh, and then you can see 110. They've got features here as well, 109. So there was a lot of features that came out um, between here, between the last stable version and the current stable version. Um, the Halo that I'm showing is actually not on stable. It's still on beta. But I wanted to highlight a couple of the things that did come out uh, that you may or may not want to look at. And this will be a quick video, unlike some of my other quick videos. Um, so obviously, this is the main dashboard. Um, my Halo is most in default configuration state right now. And I just want to show you a couple of the things that you want to change um, as soon as you get in with the latest version, latest stable version. So first thing, uh, go to configuration, go to advanced settings. And some of these things are not new to this version. They just may be new to a brand new setup. I still want to cover them anyways. Uh, primarily, most people hate the default color. So you want to change the custom color by default out of the box instead of on a per user basis. Um, the main screen page size, this is completely configurable per person. But again, you may want to change that at a global state um, and then let people change it after that. Uh, some of this other stuff you can go through and take a look at, but here's the thing I want to call out first is agent app tab names. And if you recall, the tab or the window name has always been the title of Halo PSA. It's never been where you actually are. Uh, we now have a new feature, rename tab based on the breadcrumbs that will actually tell you in the tab what window you have open. So that way you can always find the place you were in before. Um, so that's one thing. If you're in the United States and you want to get rid of the 24-hour clock, hit that. So it goes to 12 hours. Um, your time zone, generally, you want to make sure you're local to wherever you are. If it's a hosted system, you want this to be your time zone. If it's a on-prem system and the server is already in your time zone, you can just leave it as you server time zone. Security settings are here. Uh, you may want to bump it up to meet to strong. Um, but... Uh, for those of you who don't know, Halo support does have access to your system. Um, so you can turn that off. Um, and so that way they can't get in without your permission or without an account on your system. Otherwise, they're able to impersonate your agents. Um, now, the thing is about this is if you have single sign-on configured and your single sign-on is configured to take you directly to the single sign-on platform, without even asking you to log in, like to giving you the local login prompt, then this could potentially lock you out and your only method of getting back in is through support. Um, so just be wary of that. Uh, ideally, you're not taking you directly into the single sign-on or you're doing it only after you're confirmed you're good and no one's messing with anything. Uh, it's just be careful because you can lock yourself out of the system. Uh, here you got some 2FA settings you may want to review. Um, just going down... Skipping through some of that right here, you may want to turn bypass Halo 2FA if logging with single sign-on, or you may want to leave that on, it's up to you. But these two settings are ones that you may want to turn on, especially when you're going through your permission setup and you're figuring out your portal access and stuff like that. Like being able to impersonate a user uh, from the client or an agent to verify that the permissions they're getting and what they have access to is actually what you expect them to have. Uh, that is, these two settings are invaluable and they're fairly new. Um, Skipping down here uh, to searching, enable full text searching. I'd recommend you turn it on as long as you don't have insanely big database. Uh, this can significantly improve searching. It could also uh, hurt searching. If there's a lot to go through, um, searching could slow down. But generally speaking, you want to find stuff that is inside the ticket. Um, so you can turn this on, only search actions and ticket areas and only when opting in. So that way it's not searching, like it's limiting the scope of what it's searching for and you can tell it whether or not to do that. Um, 
And then you can turn on searching multiple entities at once, but I, again, you're making the scope really wide when doing that search and it could impair performance of the search. Enable knowledge base article full text searching. So that way you can find that knowledge base article is based off content. And then you have the ability to control what that searching uh, behavior is. Um, keeping, keep going down, we have a uh, setting we wanna make sure uh, always, always off. Permanently delete entries from the database. Right here, we have deleted tickets. It is a history of tickets that were deleted and you have the ability to recover those tickets if they ever are deleted. So if you leave this setting off, you'll have a recycle bin for deleted tickets. Um, and one of the things that were brought in to the later versions is the ability to search by ticket number. Um, so you can find the ticket you're looking for and then restore that one ticket. Uh, that was not always there. So leave that off. And now you have the ability to search the recycle bin to restore those tickets. Um, right here, enable config change tracking. You want to turn that on. This will give you the ability to roll back settings um, of things that you did. So it'll also give you the ability to see, like it's an audit trail of all the control settings that you changed. And you have the ability to roll it back, or you can export these into a single JSON payload and then use them in another system where you can review them or analyze them um, and so on and so forth. So highly recommend you turn on change control tracking uh, and that will monitor and track everything that you change inside of Halo. Um, and then the last thing or last two things is agent check-in is a cute uh, feature that's, that's new. Uh, you can use it to track uh, agent mood essentially. Um, so that way, you know, once a day, Halo will ask your, your employees, Hey, how are you doing? And then you can build a report. You can make it fun, uh, but still try to get like serious answers out of them. Um, and then you can build a report of a trend of how, what they're feeling day to day. And that can help you track morale and, and figure out things that you like activities to do to help people stay engaged and so on and so forth. Um, the other thing that you may want to look at is the record ticket views, which will go into a database so that you can track who's looking at the ticket. Um, but yeah, there's a lot here. Obviously, I didn't cover everything that's new. I just covered specifically some of the settings that are not on by default um, and some of the things that are brand new into the advanced settings. And like I did promise that it's going to be short. So that's it. Leave your comments below, like and subscribe for more. Thank you.